<laughs> hey, bro. As a coaching staff, how challenging has this season been for you and your staff in terms of managing personalities and all the talent that you have? <coughs> um, I think it's just, you know, part of coaching. And, and one of the things I like about coaching is it's a different challenge every day. Um, I said this at the start before game one. Our, it wasn't as much about meshing talent and meshing personalities as it was really almost everybody on our team, um, with the exception of maybe one or two guys, had to take a, a lesser role than they once had. And none of them are, you know, 38 years old. Um, and so that's a uh, that's a challenge, and it's just something that you know I thought our guys tried to do. Um, it wasn't without human nature fighting back at times, um, but it, you know. Um, They've really put the good of the whole above everything else, and I appreciate them for that. Uh, Coach, how is Kyrie doing from a health standpoint? Uh, we saw his hand was looked at, I think it was the first half of game two. Saw a little bit again, I shoot around. Uh, is that something that brought to your attention? It has not been discussed other than um, just that he got a hit and it was looked at, so it wasn't anything that was a major concern. Otherwise, we would have looked at it a lot closer, I'm guessing. <laughs> Brad, uh, Turner as a bonus have not been as effective in the series yet so far. What has been your approach to defending them, and how do you think you've done in that regard? Good question, Mark. Um, we're only two games in. <laughs> Come on. Let's not, let's not say that you unlock something. At the end of the day, we're playing hard. We have great respect for those guys. We know what those guys are capable of. We know what they do best, and we have to guard them as hard as we can. And I mean, we, we know how good they are. And that's the, you know, that's the thing that um, you're always on red alert and you're playing guys like that we expect at home. Um, you know, those guys that have good games and, and certainly be amped up and ready to go. Our guys have a great deal of respect for them. I know you probably didn't ask this often, but does coming back to the city uh, give a little bit of a tinge of nostalgia because yeah. everybody you accomplished here and <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really care about that as far as, I mean, I care about it. It's a huge, huge, awesome time of my life, and I get to see a lot of other people in the stands tonight. I get to see, um, I saw Matt Howard's kid running around the hotel with um, Tony Dobbins' his little girl. They played together in France. Tony's on our, on our staff, and, um, you know, those are the special ties, right? Um, but it's also home. Like, I grew up here. You know, and I, these were my playoff experiences growing up. Was coming to Pacers games, and so, um, you know, certainly it does. But I, I try to put that behind me and, and focus on the task at hand. And say the first time I came back, my head was spinning in a thousand directions, and you know, we only got beat by fifty. And then um, ever since then, I decided I better just make a work trip. I'm not sure I would have been able to do much anyways. But Brad, as a road coach in game three, do you worry about matching the sense of urgency you know the home team is going to have in this building? I don't lose sleep over those things, but we know that you better or else you'll lose. So it's as simple as that. If you don't, if you don't play with great detail, great urgency, and you don't play your best game yet, you're going to lose. Coach, uh, last time your team was in this building, you guys had a really good game, came with a pretty good side win. Is there anything you can take away from that experience going into this game? Was that just completely just separate? I'd say I'd say not near as much as games one and two. Um, you know, really three of the last four games we played against these guys have been just great as far as you know, tight most of the game. Obviously, game one we pulled away a little bit, but it was a you know it was it was a grind, and um, you know I think that the game two. Two weeks ago or three weeks ago in Boston, that was 114 to 112. It's probably a lot more indicative than the game that was here um, the next week of, of you know the way the series is going to be, the way the games are going to be. Coach, at the start you talked about uh, asking guys to take lesser roles and how most of the players on this team had to do so. Can you just speak to what the process has been like from a coaching perspective and how it has progressed throughout the season? Uh, obviously, yeah, it's probably different now. Than I think the biggest season. thing is. You don't, I mean, it's just an honest conversation you have that, hey, it's, everybody is always going to evaluate their situation against their best situation. So if you're 
journalist, if you're an Eli Lilly, if you're a coach, if whatever the case may be, and you had a higher role at some point in time, or you had something that you really loved to do, and, and you really were passionate about it because your opportunities were bigger, and you're always going to compare everything to that. And so that's just part of it. You just have to then figure out, okay, this is what I need to do for this team. And we all need to embrace it. And if we do that, then we have a chance to be good. We, we have still, hopefully, improving. That is the goal. Um, but we're in a much better place because of the trials we had to go through. Um, and, you know, I just thought we had to, you know, we probably were a little bit, you know, we, we weren't as good at the end of last year as we may have looked. Um, and so it was good to go through those things in retrospect. And, part of it. So we're still playing. We still have a real chance to write a chapter and we'll see what happens. Brad, speaking of coming home, Michael Shrewsbury on your staff is from Indy. What's his role on your staff and what are his contributions? Yeah, I mean, he's been front of the bench assistant ever since I, since we came. I, I've told this story many times when, when I, I learned that Butler was keeping the job in-house, which I thought would happen, and we weren't going to have any staff changes there, and, and those guys were all set. With, with their situations. First two calls I made were to Mike Shrewsbury and LaValle Jordan to come with me. And um, LaValle stayed at Michigan and Micah came. And um, I'm super thankful Micah did. He's made my life easier and, and he has, uh, he adjusted the NBA way quicker than I did. He's a lot smarter than I am and, and just as good of a friend and as good of a coach as you can be around. Is he an X and O guy? Is that his? He's really good and he's a great communicator. Just knows how to get things communicated quickly, succinctly. And again, I, th I thought his transition was smoother than mine. Yeah, Coach, uh, just on Al Horford, obviously he was a little bit of weather last game. Where is he now as far as that illness he was dealing with? Uh, I think he's fine. I think he's fine. Turns out if you play 16 straight minutes, it cures all those. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Thank you, Thanks, Thank you, Coach.